So guys, I unboxed and shared my first impressions about the Galaxy A53 and now 10 days have gone by. I just want to share my final thoughts with you. And I think it's not a specialty phone. It's a really good everyday multi-purpose phone. And in this price segment, I think that's what a phone is really supposed to do. Now I do have my reasons for this, so let me explain. Despite a massive 5000 mAh battery, this phone is quite elegant looking. It's thin and at the same time doesn't feel as bulky as it really could have been. A beefy battery can and will make your phone look thick, ugly and inconvenient, but this not so much. The camera module, it neatly blends into the back panel, it's not too protruding and doesn't feel like much when you're holding it in your hand. You also get optical fingerprint sensor, stereo speakers, micro SD card storage expansion and on top of all of this, this is IP67 water and dust resistant and that's pretty good design in my opinion. The only thing to not be happy about is that they've removed the 3.5mm headphone jack. I know a lot of people are now switching to wireless earphones and yeah but it's still a novelty now and it's gone in the A53. But yeah, the phone overall doesn't feel bulky, sits comfortably in the hand and despite the plastic back, it does not feel cheap to me. It has a very nice matte finish which gives it a slightly premium touch and the pastel blue color really lands it. And because it's plastic, it doesn't get slippery, it doesn't get sweaty if you're in a humid area, it keeps it cool and it's pretty lightweight. Second, let's pick up display. Samsung is known for the best displays and this one has it too. It's an FHD Plus AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. The display, it's both super smooth and super bright. It's got a peak brightness of 800 nits, which is more than sufficient in the brightest of daylight conditions. And since it's an AMOLED display, it's definitely a blast of colors, vivid and very high contrast. So whether it's photos or videos, everything looks super punchy. The one downside though is that it does not play HDR content. Also, while it does say 120Hz refresh rate and it's actually pretty smooth and fluidic, however, and I did point this out in my unboxing and first impressions video also, if the page or the app content is still loading, it does sort of ruin the 120Hz fluid scrolling experience and this does have a bit to do with the processor and I'll talk more about it but first I want to talk about software. It comes with Android 12, One UI 4.1 right out of the box. But what's exciting is that it comes with all the premium features that we saw with the Galaxy S22. I mean, except for Samsung DeX and wireless power share, which of course is a hardware thing, this pretty much gives you the flagship One UI 4.1 experience. It's got linked windows, screen recorder, quick share, smart view, nearby share, Dolby Atmos, always on display, extra dim, secure folder, quick switch to secure folder, and even Bixby routines. What's also great is that Samsung has blessed this phone with four years of OS upgrade and five years of security updates. So you're sure to get all the way up to Android 16 on this phone. There's also stuff like object eraser and reflection eraser that would detect unnecessary objects or reflections in your photos and remove them if you draw around them. So yeah, that was reason number three, the software and the upgrade experience. All right, now onto the reason number four, which is cameras. The A53 may not have the most advanced set of camera hardware, but given the four lenses it has and Samsung's optimization, the final results are quite good. So here are samples taken using the primary lens in the regular 12 megapixel mode, although you can take photos in 64 megapixel mode if you choose to. Now, given sufficient ambient or natural light, photos come out crisp and clear. They're nicely detailed, colors look close to natural, and the phone's software does not aggressively over-optimize the photos, which is good. Even indoors, the camera does a good job of taking close to natural pictures. And I do feel that a bit more dynamic range would have worked wonders for this camera. But guys, go ahead and download these photos. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can just actually look at these photos for yourself and evaluate the quality. Now, here are some shots comparing photos taken using the primary lens on the left and ultra wide on the right, standing at the same spot. Now, the ultra wide does seem to have better dynamic range, but it's clearly less bright as compared to the primary lens, which stands at f1.8 as opposed to f2.2 on the wide angle lens. So what I'd suggest is that if the lighting conditions are a little poor, then you should use the primary lens and otherwise the ultra wide really takes fantastic shots. And moving on, here are some shots taken using the portrait mode which have also come out really well. I mean look at this picture of Jazz and this is unfiltered with just minor editing I can make it look almost professional. 
And even with transparent glass bottles, the separation did not get ruined except for maybe a bit over here highlighted with the yellow. These here are now shots taken using the front facing 32 megapixel uh, camera which also does a good job at detecting human faces and applying that portrait mode to create a nice bokeh effect. Now in low light, that's when the camera's performance is really tested and as it gets darker, it does get challenging. Though there is a bit of loss in terms of color accuracy, but the photos are quite noise free as you can see right here. But again guys, I really suggest that you go ahead and download these photos from the link in the description. Check out the quality and see if these are the photos that you can work with. And by the way, photos on, on a computer screen would always look a little less saturated, uh, while on your phone they might look better. So look in both places. And hopping on to videos, while the A53 can shoot 4K videos at up to 30 FPS, there's also optical image stabilization which ensures that you get a reduced shake when shooting videos, especially while walking or moving around very quickly. And here I'm just trying to take some footage of, you know, dogs playing with each other. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this footage. Reason number 5 is power efficiency. So it's got an Exynos 1280 chip which is not a powerful processor. but in my opinion, it's a really power efficient phone. So what that means is you can just do more on this phone for longer. So if you're watching TV shows, videos, movies, you can do that for longer. You want to take photos and videos over a long period of time, you can do that. Basically, you can chill with the phone for longer without feeling the need to charge it every now and then. So you take a power efficient chip and then you you know, bring in a 5000 milliampere hour brick. You've got two days of battery life and that is a requirement of a lot of people. People who are on the move, they commute a lot, they don't have enough opportunities to charge their phone. That's, you know, the group of people this phone is really meant for and I think it'll do a great job at that. It doesn't mean that you can't play your favorite games. Just to demonstrate, I played Asphalt 9 and Call of Duty. The gameplay did not have any issues. The only issues I'd say is that it takes a while for the game to load depending on how heavy the game is and the graphic quality is not as sharp because the processor won't support it. Games like Call of Duty won't even give you the option to increase the graphic quality and of course that's done so that you at least get consistent gameplay performance and not a laggy one. Alright, so these are some legit reasons for getting the Galaxy A53 and as I said in the beginning, this is a fantastic everyday multi-purpose phone that starts at about 31,000 rupees in India and $350 in the US. It's got a large display and stereo speakers, great for watching content. You've got 5000 mAh battery, you can watch that content for longer. Uh, you're probably never gonna have any battery anxiety, that's how efficient the chip is. Uh, you get one UI 4.1, all features clubbed in. You get five years of security updates and four years of OS upgrade. It's just a really reliable, durable phone and you get Samsung support. So all in all, I think it's a pretty well balanced package and price is really subjective. It really depends on what you're looking for as a user. If you're looking for super fast performance and high graphics and great gaming, maybe not. But if you're looking for a feature packed phone, great for consuming media or content and a great battery life, it's a really good phone to think about. Alright, that's pretty much it guys on the A53. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section, I'll surely answer. And of course, if this was useful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. It goes a long way in supporting me and the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.